Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Frankie, come on. We went for a nice walk this morning, the three of us, didn't we? Yes, we did. He's laying under my makeup table where it's cool on the floor. So I need some bobby pins. Um, I hope you're having a good morning. It is beautiful here. If you didn't get out in it and it's beautiful there, then you're missing out. There's not a lot of days where it's not too humid and it's warm enough. It's not raining. It's not overcast. Oh my gosh. Went for a walk. Flowers are, are getting a different bloom now than they did previously. There's just different layers of things growing. And so we just had a big bloom start to die down. And so a lot of the green is starting to get thicker. Also, the birds are really out after all those rains and storms. They are so happy. They are singing like in a movie. They are singing on every mailbox and post. There is, I have a neighbor down the road that has a little rock garden patch, a small one. And then in the middle, there's a tall rock. And I always thought, it I liked it before they redid it. It used to be a lot more rocks and a bird bath and this and that, but they really simplified. When we get older, sometimes we just don't want to deal with all that. And I get it. So anyway, there was a bird perched right on top of it. it looked like a, a sparrow, but it sang like a chickadee. And I was remembering a chickadee nest that I had had. And um, then it started singing like a mockingbird. And, start, and I just thought, I just stood there with the dogs and I just, oh, in that moment, breathing it in, knowing I need to get a move on, but I just wanted to stand there longer and listen. And then the bird flew away. It was like, okay, girl, let's go. It was, it was kind of funny, but I would have loved to have listened to it longer. That's all I'm saying. I washed my face this morning. I forgot to put moisturizer on it. But I don't think I need much because I think I'm gonna skip it. Because it is kind of humid. When it starts getting humid, I don't I don't need to have layers and layers of stuff. <coughs> so <laughs> my great grandmother was a character. She was born in 1889. Nine, no, I'm sorry. 1889. Duh. <laughs> and um, she I don't have a lot of pictures from back in the day because there weren't a lot of pictures, but um, I take it because all the women in my family are fairly attractive. She was young, pretty, spunky, and um, lived dangerously, just like her daughter and her daughter's daughter. <laughs> Down, down the line, feisty women. But she, um, I might have had one picture of her um, working, volunteering as with the women's suffrage. And um, they were wearing skirts that came above the ankles and they were walking into a saloon. They wanted to start being able to go where they wanted to go and um, they wanted to start showing their ankles. Start wearing s different fashions. Didn't want to wear six layers of clothes even in the summertime. That's why it was such a big deal in the 
late teens and early 20s that women were changing. They were tired of suffering. They didn't have a vote. Most couldn't even own property unless every T and every I was dotted. Because usually someone could find a loophole in it and they'd have to give it up to a male. It wasn't fair, but that's how it was. So anyway, she married one of those big honking men from the bar. God, he was, he died like Elvis did. A lot of people do. And I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people die in the bathroom, on the toilet. And they do that because their heart's given out. And they might be constipated because of whatever is going on with them. And so they're pushing really hard, and I think it messes up their heart. Now, that's just me. You can Google it. That's what I'm thinking. I, I just think that it's, it's so common for people to die in the bathroom. Anyway, so she gave birth to a woman who my great-grandmother um, who was one of the first business owners in Burlington, Iowa. She was an excellent cook. I mean, she's where I learned how to overeat. This just feels good. I don't need to keep doing this. <laughs> I just, um, anyway, she taught me how to overeat. If you didn't, if you only ate one serving, evidently you didn't like the food. If you, if you happily and eagerly ate two helpings, then maybe you just didn't feel good. She was in her element if you ate three servings of food. So, oh my God, my stomach would hurt. Yeah, we've had some... We've had some brave, courageous, dangerous women in my family, but we've also had compulsivity um, and obsessive need to control and to feel fed. Each woman in her own right was very independent, very active outside the home, um, lived on the edge. So each younger generation then would be kind of scared. <laughs> truth I guess like what's gonna happen next <laughs> I mean come on my great great grandmother was alive until I was in my teens I think I was 18 when she passed away 1920 21 right in there can't remember the years um, I'm terrible with dates and names always have been so not part of my dementia if I have any dementia oh I gotta hurry up and get ready for work so anyway um, you know it's generational trauma you know when you have a mom like my great great grandmother who was living on that kind of edge you knew that she could be killed by some jerk guy because it was legal basically to kill women back then. All you had to do was make up a story that you were dating and she cheated on you. You didn't have to prove you were dating. <laughs> well, unless you had, unless she was really loved and people were really keeping track, but people who were rebellious like grandma, I don't know. I'm gonna have to do something with my bangs, I guess. So, I think this is getting empty. It was a little dry yesterday. We'll see how it does today. <coughs> so then, that child has attachment style issues, meaning they're afraid to love. They want love, and then they want to protect themselves. 
or they want you to keep proving they love you or you want to keep proving you love them. I mean, it, it's, the brain's a funny thing. And then you're raising kids and you're kind of treating them in a certain way. So it's generational. So it was my great, great grandma, then my great grandma who was independent business owner, worked basically 24 seven. I mean, even in old age, um, she only slept four or five hours a night. Then she had a daughter who was part of the whole um, independence thing too. She was one of the first women to have an airplane pilot's license. I know, right? She had, she was such a rebellious person. She was selling bootleg liquor and cigarettes. I don't know if she ever got arrested or not, but I did hear a tale, a story one time where she had an, her, someone told her, you gotta quit being so basically obnoxious because you're driving around in a, she thought it was a cool car, I guess. What was it, a Model T? Something like that. And it had seven different colors on the car. So it was identifiable by far, by far away. <laughs> What a dork. That's how rebellious and cocky. I mean, just think how cocky you have to be to pull some of this stuff off and not get caught. You had to be brave. Um, well, I wouldn't call it brave. I use bravery for things that are good, not bad. <laughs> um, she was cocky. And uh, she was also a piano player. She could play beautifully, not concert beautiful, but beautiful. Um, she was also one of the most beautiful women I'd ever seen, my grandmother. She had Uh, dark hair. Dark skin. And this beautiful widow's peak that came down. Mm -hmm. Her skin was so olive. And she would, I, I guess she was coloring her hair back then <clears throat> when I was little. Um, but she had dark hair, like black hair. Um, and she'd wear it down to here and it would just be like, um, she was she, almost like um, Elizabeth Taylor, only with dark skin, kind of like in that one movie she was in. But this grandmother was tall and sl more slender. I think Elizabeth was very small and petite. Grandma didn't like being called Grandma. She preferred her name or her nickname. Her name, <coughs> I believe, was May. I don't know what her middle name is. Maybe her middle name was May. I don't remember her first name. Her mother's name was Lily May. And my great-great-grandmother's name was Mar Margaret May. My name is April May. Um, but she was so rebellious. She, she named my mom Sharon Lynn. Sherry Lynn. So she broke the... So we had six generations alive at one time. Everybody had a baby about 20 years old. I didn't, my sister did. So, um, wild independent women living on the edge.
then my mother had attachment style issues as well. Now, understand, it takes a unique person to go out and do things that normally a man would do, not a woman. I get that. That's exciting. That's amazing. It's exhilarating. It's ball busting. I get that. However, when you have children, that's where it comes in. So it's not that I'm not grateful for this juicy history that I have. I am. And I've kind of been a, a ball buster too in certain ways. I know some of my clients would say I'm a ball buster. <laughs> oh. But when you have kids at home, that's not what they're getting, usually. They're not getting that they're proud of you, they're impressed by you, they're inspired by you, they want to grow up to be just like you. They may be saying those things. But what they're thinking is, where's mommy? Where's daddy? I have never seen a client more than three times to clear up an issue that didn't have abandonment issues from their parents. Everybody else that I've seen, we can clear up what's wrong with them in one to three sessions. That's the truth. Because shit makes sense to them. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't mean to say that. I mean, I know I cuss, but I didn't mean to say that one. Uh, so, then what do you do? Well, at some point, eventually, you recognize parents did the very best they had to work with. And then we just work on, we realize they just did what they could. And then we realize, oh, where's my, there it is. Then we realize we have to work on our own triggers so that we can start repairing our nervous system, basically. That's where the work starts is crossing over from blaming to taking care of business. I do know this. Um, my mother or grandmother or great grandmother didn't have a chance to apologize to me or help me a lot through my journey before they died. I think from the work I've done, they each did the best they could with what they had to work with. So I was able to blame them for a long time for my behaviors and how I treated people. Yes, I was. If you had a childhood like mine, you'd drink too. I don't know how many times I said that. If not out loud, I did in my head. That's for sure. That's true. Um, but then the work started. When I started taking responsibility, it's kind of like, you know, the wolf might have blown my house down, but what am I, am I going to, does that mean I'm going to be homeless or am I going to build another house? Right? So even in old age, there are people who finally wake up and say, wow, you mean I can quit feeling like this? Resentful and angry all the time? Yes. I wish that would fit in there. Yes, you can. See, this is a color I really like. But it only has this wand and then something you can finish up with. And I don't like the wand because it gets too much stuff on here. Eh, what are you going to do? 
So, um, that could be your homework today. What are you going to do about things you can't do anything about? Look at all those eyebrows. How do I grow so many eyebrows? I have always been a hairy, hairy person. But when I put uh, when I put mascara on my eyebrows, every little extra hair shows up. Mm, shoot, I gotta go. I gotta get to work. <clears throat> well, I can't be perfect. But some days I feel more perfect than others. You know what I mean? Some days it just all comes together. <laughs> so much nicer. So much easier. I know one day I felt that way. It turns out I forgot to put eye, uh, eyebrow eyebrows on. So my you can't count on what the lighting is going to look like in my in my office because I have a window. The lighting changes as the trees change, as the sun, clouds, etc. So. <clears throat> So I'm sitting there talking with a, a client and I'm feeling completely put together. I finally take a, just a second to look over in this little square of what I look like and I thought, gosh, it doesn't look like I have any. It doesn't look like I have any eyebrows. I've done it. I've done it with eyeliner, mascara, brows, lips, blush. But usually it's just one thing I've forgotten. When I don't wear blush, I look like this white mask. I don't know. I'm not a professional lighter person, but I kind of like to do that. But what I've, what I've been told is if I do that, I have to close the window because that natural lighting comes in in different prisms. So it changes the whole, the whole thing. So, eh, who cares? They don't really care. <laughs> It, not a lot, as long as I don't look totally scary. <clears throat> All right, I love y'all. I hope something about this made sense, but what I do know is I love seeing your comments or just say hi. Mwah. Bye for now.